Good morning, Faith Church. Happy Sunday, and thank you so much for joining us. Well, this is the day that God has made, and we're going to rejoice and be glad in it. Let's remind ourselves who we are, Faith Church. Our mission is to express God's love to all, invite others to know Jesus, and make faithful disciples. Actually, this month is our birthday, so happy birthday, Faith Church. Either the first or second Sunday of the month was the first Sunday of Faith Church back in 1992, so we're 28 years old this month. Congratulations, you look so young. Keep it up. So glad that you're here to join in for worship this morning. Let's begin with a song. Amen. Well, welcome. Glad that you're joining in today. Remember, at the end of our service, we have some announcements. So in the meantime, don't forget you can invite friends right now to join in and watch our live stream. There's a little button on Facebook that you can share this live stream with folks. And at the end, this will become a video that you can share as well. Well, Faith Kids, come on around. Let's uh, have our time together. I hope that you are doing well. Hope you're enjoying your first week of your summer break. Hope your parents and your family are doing well. And uh, hopefully you have received your letters uh, in the mail for the Sunday School lesson. This week is about two wonderful miracles that Jesus performed during his ministry. One was that he brought healing to a woman that had been sick for very, very long. All she had to do was just touch one part of his clothing and have great faith and she was healed of her ailment and uh, later on he, Jesus even visited a little girl that had just died and he brought her back to life so Jesus has this healing uh, touch and uh, this ministry and this ministry of healing is alive and well today for you and for me. So we're going to watch a story about healing that uh, a family experienced, a family of faith. So let's watch. This is called Cole's Story. This is Cole. He's 12 years old. Today, we're heading out to the country to spend some time with Cole's family on their ranch. <coughs> this morning, they're cooking pancakes and eggs for breakfast. Yummy! This favorite 
tomorrow we'll have a good day. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. 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 Lars, you ready for pancakes? My favorite thing to do with my brothers is basically the same thing to do with my dad, is hunting and fishing and working around here and stuff like that. About a mile from the ranch is Colin Carson's favorite fishing hole. It only takes a couple minutes and Cole catches a 19-inch rainbow trout. How cool is that? But Cole and Carson have to get back to the ranch. Dad's got a lot of work for them to do. On a daily, daily basis, I might have a list of things that need to be done, whether it's checking for calves, there's, you know, moving cows from one pasture to the next. They help me with fencing, you name it, they do it. It's, uh, it's pretty much nonstop for them. <laughs> yeah. Cole does a lot of work on the ranch with his dad and brothers. It takes a lot of help to work on a ranch, but Cole's family needed to rely on God when his dad got really sick a couple of years ago. Before Keith got sick, he was a healthy, strong, normal kind of guy, uh, definitely the strong leader of our family and just a great role model for our kids like he is today. And then uh, after he got real sick, that's when he went into the hospital. I'd lost 50 pounds. I was uh, weighed about 150 pounds and uh, woke up one morning and the side of my face was paralyzed. At first I didn't really, I didn't, I just thought it was something small, but then it started getting pretty serious. I was diagnosed with Wagner's granulomatosis. I was pretty knocked out. I was, was having trouble even functioning at that point, just physically. Keith went from being a strong, healthy, uh, normal kind of guy with three young boys following him to quickly being unable to barely do more than get out of bed during the day. I thought that maybe my dad was going to die and we'd just be on our own maybe, but... When his dad was sick, Cole's mom taught him a Bible verse to help comfort him. Be joyful all years, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. 1 Thessalonians 5, 16 through 18. And she taught us that verse. Um, she said it every time we drove to go to the hospital. Well, the road to recovery started basically as soon as they diagnosed me. The doctor that I saw that wasn't afraid of the disease. He'd been on studies for it. And he just said, you know, this isn't no big deal. We can get you through this. It took about five months for my facial paralysis to go away. It probably took me five to six months to start gaining some weight back and gaining a little bit of strength. But it was a good year before I was functioning very well. Keith is doing wonderful right now. Um, he has made a miraculous comeback and we just thank God every day for the turnaround in his life and in his health. And even the doctors are amazed at the progress. If I had a friend and, I, and they had someone that was sick or dying or just not very well. I'm just telling them to trust the God and know that He will lead you through it. It was a great lesson for the boys and I that we could always trust God, not even knowing what the outcome would be, but that He would be there for us in many different ways.
Well, God offers us healing in so many different ways, healing our bodies and healing our relationships and even healing our hearts. So we trust and we pray for God's healing in our lives. I hope that you have a wonderful week, kids. I hope that you continue to have a wonderful summer and I'll see you again soon. It's now time for us to prepare our hearts for the sermon. We'll listen to this song, uh, go into a time of prayer, and then open the scripture and see what the word of God is for us today. Let's join together. Let us pray together. Merciful God, you remind us through Scripture that you desire mercy and not sacrifice. You showed us an example of your mercy in the life and actions of Jesus Christ. Let your church live out that mercy for others as the healing and compassionate presence that Jesus was in the world. We bring to you today the joys and the concerns of our hearts. We give you thanks for all the gifts that you have given us. We pray for those who are in need of healing and wholeness. And we lift up one another as we go through this season of uncertainty in our lives. God, we know deep within our hearts that by the power of your loving presence, you are able to accomplish abundantly far more than we can ask or imagine. By your word, O oh God, everything was made. Your word is powerful and can transform the hearts of men and women. Speak to us today, O oh God. Open our hearts and minds to your renovating word and give us guidance and strength. In the name of Jesus Christ, we pray. Amen. Our text today comes to us from 
the book of Galatians, Galatians 3. I'm going to be reading verses 23 through 29. These are the words of the Apostle Paul to the early church. And just uh, as any time a group of people gather together, they have issues, problems, things that they must face, and challenges that uh, are theirs to take on. And these are some of the words of encouragement and direction from Paul to the church in Galatia. Now before faith came, we were imprisoned and guarded under the law until faith would be revealed. Therefore, the law was our disciplinarian until Christ came, so that we might be justified by faith. But now that faith has come, we're no longer subject to the disciplinarian. For in Christ Jesus, you are all children of God through faith. As many of you are baptized into Christ, have clothed yourselves with Christ. There's no longer Jew or Greek. There's no longer slave or free. There's no longer male or female. For all of you are one in Christ Jesus. And if you belong to Christ, then you are Adam's offspring, Abraham's offspring, heirs according to the promise. May God add a blessing to the reading of this word this morning. So normally in my sermons, I try to do probably two main things. Uh, one is I try to teach, uh, try to take what's in the scriptures and, and bring them to light. It's not always easy to go through the scriptures and, and, and dig and find out what it really means uh, for us. And I also try to encourage, and those are the, the main things that I try to do. Today, uh, this sermon might seem a little bit more like a psalm. And if you've read the psalms, you know that the psalms are full of prayers, petitions to God. Uh, it's celebration, it's uh, thankfulness, uh, but it's also asking God for help. And in the middle of the psalms, we can see that there is a deep expression of the human experience, uh, all of its ups and downs, its, its joys and concerns. And uh, so this uh, sermon this morning is a little unlike the ones that I'm normally giving. The sermon title today is By Faith, By Faith. In one month from now, I will celebrate my 17th year as a pastor. For the first seven years, I served as an associate pastor. And for the past 10 years, I have served as a sole pastor of two churches, one in Michigan and this one in Florida. That means at this point, I have prepared and preached close to 500 sermons. Most of these sermons have been delivered using an outline which I have found enables me to focus on a few main points and gives me the opportunity to speak to you in a more conversational manner and to add any last minute and hopefully inspired words if they come to me in the moment. But today, I'm gonna to read you something that I have written. This week has been a tough one. There's a lot going on. We are experiencing tremendous challenges, both externally and internally. And I'm sure that I'm not the only one that can say these words. I feel sad, I feel disappointment, and I feel tired. I've tried to discipline myself over the past few years, in particular to stay away from watching the news because the news feels like such an unbalanced and divisive view of reality and of what is truly important in life. But over the past few months, I felt it necessary to stay on top of current events, in particular as it relates to the coronavirus, 
as I want to do my best to help lead our church through this difficult season in our lives. Of course, it hasn't taken long to realize that over the past several days, the coronavirus is not the only thing making headlines. I've always felt that serving churches that are made up of members from a variety of backgrounds and a variety of perspectives, it always seemed best to stay focused on the gospel and to leave politics alone. I still feel this is the right thing for me to do as your pastor, but it would be irresponsible for me to ignore the major problems we're facing in this season and to remain silent. I'm not going to give you another opinion about what is really wrong with our society or give you what I think is the solution. I'm sure you feel like I do. I'm tired of hearing people's opinions. So instead, let me just share with you what the Apostle Paul said many years ago to the first generation of Christian believers. Just like us, they struggled with problems related to unfair economic systems, racial, ethnic, and religious prejudice and discrimination, undervaluing what we can offer to one another as men and women, and injustice. Paul talked a lot about the law, why it was given, what was its purpose, what role should it play in our lives. He talked a lot about morality, what's right and what's wrong. And he encouraged each and every community of faith to grow up, to follow Christ's example, and to become mature Christians. So how can we take the words of Paul and discover what the Holy Spirit might be saying to us today in light of current circumstances? Can God's Word bring clarity to the problems we're facing? Can we find encouragement? Can we find hope? Can we find direction? There's one word in our passage today that stands out to me. One word that doesn't necessarily comfort me, but it seems to hold on to my heart. It's a simple word. It's a difficult word. It's a word that Paul says is the answer to every problem we ever face. Not only will it make us free, but it will make things right. The word is faith. Faith means trust. Faith means surrender. Faith means I don't have it all figured out. Faith means I am completely dependent. Faith means, I need you, God. Faith means, I love you, God. Faith means, I'm blind and lost, and I've tried so many ways to make it right. Faith means, I have no idea of what the future holds. Faith means, I couldn't tell you what my life is all about. Faith means, in spite of all this, there is something inside of me that recognizes that no matter what anyone else says and no matter what I think or feel, I know deep in my heart that everything is going to be all right. I can't prove it to you. And I still have my doubts. It may not even make me feel any better if I'm being honest with you. I don't know how God is going to do it. I don't have any special insight into God's game plan. 
I don't know how God is going to use these things and turn them around for something good. I don't know if things are going to get worse before they get better. But I can't let go of the grip that this little word has deep, deep, deep inside. I've seen miracles happen. I've seen broken hearts and lives healed. I've seen the overwhelmingly powerful grace of God be poured out on people's lives. I've lived happy days and weeks and months and years. I've lived in darkness and been to places that I would never wish others to go. But that little word, faith, it is anything but little. Jesus said you don't need much. Just accept this tiny gift from me, faith. And it can change everything. It can move mountains. It can bring back the dead. It can heal. It can even confound the wisest of us all. Faith. We need it. We need faith. I need faith. You need faith. Because without it, we have nothing. God help us. We need your gift of faith. We cry out like the father of the sick child so many years ago and say, Lord, I believe. Help me in my unbelief. We trust you. We love you. And we need you. Amen. Today we join together at the table of God. We will prepare our hearts in song. If you would like to share in the elements of Holy Communion, you're welcome to gather food and drink together wherever you are, and we will share in this meal together. Let's listen and sing along as we meditate on God's Word today.
All people of sincere faith, regardless of your religious tradition, you are invited to share in the Lord's Supper today. You may join in today by sharing in food and drink at home. And we will now pray and bless this meal made sacred by the Holy Spirit that joins us together at this table. We come to this table not because we must, but because we may. We come not because we are strong, but because we are weak. We come not because we have perfect faith, but because we have questions and even doubts. But we come nonetheless because Jesus invites us to come, and we will never be turned away. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. You who come to me shall not hunger. You who believe in me shall never thirst. In company with everyone who hungers for spiritual food, we come to this table to know the risen Christ in this memorial of his love. Jesus joined together with his disciples at the table. Each and every one of them had come from different places in life, some from high, some from low, some more educated than others, but each and every one of them found in Jesus a faith that changed their whole lives. And as they sat there at that table, even in the midst of circumstances outside of that room that were difficult and challenging, and scary and violent. They came to this place to know that in the presence of Christ and in the promises of Christ, they would not only get through this life, but they would find deep, abundant life that Christ had promised to them. So as he sat with them, he took the bread and he gave thanks and he broke it and he said, this is my body broken for you Take and eat it as often as you do in remembrance of me. And in the same manner as supper was coming to a close, he took the cup and he said to them, This cup is the new covenant in my blood. Take and drink it as often as you do in remembrance of me. Together as we join together, these are the gifts of God for the people of God, the bread of life, and the cup of blessing. Please join me in the prayer of thanksgiving. We give you thanks, almighty God, for your presence and your purpose, for your loving kindness and your steadfast spirit. May the blessings of this table strengthen our faith, increase our generosity, and unify our hearts through Christ, who is our Redeemer. Amen. Well, I'd like to remind each and every one of us that let's continue to stay connected with one another, continue to call, text, email, send letters, reach out and offer your support and love to one another here at Faith Church. If you would like to send in a prayer request, you're more than welcome to email it to faithpsl at bellsouth.net. We put these prayer requests into our weekly newsletter and we share these requests with one another. And let's keep our five-year vision alive. Remember the invitation to share uh, with your friends on Facebook, social media. You can email uh, video links to one another. Stay connected through worship services and Bible studies. Also invite you to continue your spiritual growth during this season. And you're welcome to join us for Bible study on Thursday at 10 a.m. If you'd like to give an offering, and if you're able to give an offering, you can mail it to the church at 22, uh, 2199 Southwest Savona Boulevard in Port St. Lucie. Uh, we have a locked 
mailbox that we receive our mail in and you can also go online if you prefer and you can give at the secure uh, online uh, form at our website which is faithchurchpsl.org and I want to thank you so much your generosity over these past few months has been overwhelming and we thank you so much for keeping the church close to your hearts and helping its mission to continue in strength. Let us take a moment and let's say happy birthday to a few folks. Elijah Mathurin, June 8 is your birthday. Happy birthday, Elijah. And on that same day, Kelly Phillips has a birthday. So Kelly, happy birthday this week. We wanna congratulate two couples who are celebrating an anniversary. We have Robert and Lee Chancy on June 9, happy anniversary to you. And Vincent and Marjorie Martin on June 13, it's your anniversary, congratulations to you as well. Well, let's finish with this song and then we will uh, say our closing prayer and go out with God's blessing today.
As we leave this shared virtual space today, let's make a commitment to stay connected with one another and let's dedicate our offerings for the mission that God has given us here at Faith Church. And let's enter into this week with God's blessing. Let's pray. Ancient of days, you call us not just to give us the blessing of being called your people, but also to be a blessing for all people on this earth. Give us the wisdom and the courage to be a blessing to this community and to this world. Through these offerings, may we be channels of your compassion and healing to others. God, we ask that you bless us so that we can be a blessing to others. Bless us so that we can be healers of a world that's hurting. And bless us so that we can spread the hope that only the triune God can inspire and give to this world. We pray this in the name of the one who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Well, thank you so much for joining us. I'm glad that you have a chance to say hello and greet and love one another here in this virtual space and that we can share in God's word. I hope that you have a wonderful week. I hope that you stay safe and healthy. Uh, I'll see you again soon. And in the meantime, take care. Bye-bye.